Hello everyone, this is Anthony Fasano, your engineering career coach and founder of the Institute for Engineering Career Development. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about credentials and how important it is to obtain credentials in your engineering career. So many engineers that I know don't feel like studying for an exam, they don't want to get their license, they're tired. The bottom line is, is you need to get these credentials if you want to be successful in your engineering career. And in this tutorial, I'm going to explain to you why it's so important to get these credentials and then give you some tips and strategies for achieving them very early on in your engineering career. I hope to inspire you to start obtaining the right credentials and start to take your engineering career wherever you want to take it. When I say credentials, I'm, I'm speaking about licenses, certifications, education, award, publications. These are very important in the engineering industry because they give you credibility which can make a huge difference in your engineering career. Having those letters after your name as an engineer tells people something about you, even if they know nothing about you. They can really set you apart from other professionals, whether it's other organizations, if you're submitting a proposal for a project, or you're trying to get your a resume, or trying to, on your resume when you're trying to get a job, or within your company when you're trying to get promoted. I mean, you could work in the office next to someone and you may think you're 10 times smarter than that person, but if he or she has their PE license and you don't, they may get every promotion over you, which kind of is sometimes sad. But the bottom line is that people, a lot of times people don't know you. They don't know your personality. They don't know what you bring to the table. But what they do know is your credentials, right? There may be 10, 10 resumes in a pile and the hiring manager may say, if there's only three that have their PE, let's just interview those three. They won't even look at the other seven, which is unfortunate, but that's what happens. And that's the reward that those three people get for taking the time to get their credentials. I knew a woman once who was trying to get partner in a company in New York City, and she kept getting passed over and passed over. And the reason was, was because the company manual, the actual company guidelines would not allow for someone to get a promotion to the level she wanted without a PE license. And she didn't have her PE license or professional engineering license. So she actually had to end up leaving there after a long time, relocating her family just because she didn't take the time to get the license that she needed to achieve her goal. Also. It's very important that when you think about credentials in your career, you want to make sure that you don't procrastinate in obtaining them. What happens to a lot of engineers is that they put things off, and by the time they try to do it, they've got so many more work responsibilities with clients and long hours, and then they have a family, and then they're trying to balance between work and their family, and these credentials, there's no time to study and prepare for them. So don't procrastinate. Get these as early as possible as you can in your career. Lastly, you want to utilize company benefits. A lot of companies will pay for graduate school. They'll pay for exam fees, exam course fees, sometimes review course fees, books sometimes. It depends on the company. I know that when I graduated, I was able to pick a company that paid for all my graduate school and I got my master's in civil engineering um, with the company's resources, which was wonderful. And that, that was actually my plan. And I, and I approached it that way. Let's talk a little bit about the actual process or the exam preparation. I want to talk about the PE exam, but then I know that those of you that are out there that might not be interested in the PE exam or might be in another country outside of the United States, I want to talk about test taking in general. And I will say that my book, Engineer Your Own Success, which is currently being updated through Wiley Press, in the newer version that comes out, um, we are going to have sections on different countries, some of the top, probably top 10 to 12 engineering countries in the world and the processes for any kind of licensure or certification. So first of all, take the fundamentals of engineering exam ASAP. That's for those of you that are engineers in the United States trying to get your PE license. The FE exam is the first part of the PE exam and it's very calculation intensive and it's widespread across the different disciplines. Most Engineering students take this when they're a senior. And if you haven't or you're not planning to, you should. While well, everything is fresh in your mind. Because there's many engineers that I know that couldn't get their PE license because they never took the FE exam and they struggle with trying to pass it because they're so far removed from school. 
Secondly, start the PE exam as a PE application process for the PE exam as early as possible. Usually in most states, you need three or four years of working experience before you can sit for the exam, but that doesn't mean you can't start the application. It's a very rigorous application where you have to list all of the projects that you've worked on and who you worked under, and that supervising PE has to sign for you. So a lot of engineers will wait four years to fill out the application and then realize, number one, that it's a ton of work. And number two, they don't have the contacts anymore. Maybe they relocated to another company and they don't have someone to sign their form. So make sure you're keeping up to date with this. and Keep track from day one of the projects you're working on, the amount of time you're working on them, and who the project manager is. For all exams, start with the end in mind. So what I mean by that is, if you know you're going to take an exam, sign up for it right away. First thing you do, and put it on your calendar. Then work backwards to prepare a study plan because that's going to commit you to the exam. That's going to commit you to the process. And you need that commitment to succeed. Definitely take a review course for any kind of licensing exam that you're going to take. It just doesn't make sense not to. Many engineers will tell me that they're, they're better at studying on their own. The problem with self-study is that there's too many there's too many things that can distract you in today's world that it's hard to stay focused. So if you go to a course each week, once a week, it's going to force you to stay in the loop. Do a chapter every week. It's going to force you to see the information. What to bring to the exam? This is another big one. The PE exam, for example, in, in most states in the United States, is a totally open book, meaning you can bring any book you want, which is crazy because some people bring wagons and wagons of books. The problem is, is that, yes, you may have every answer that you need to pass the exam in these books, but you don't have the time to dig up those answers. And that is why I recommend getting one book. One, one manual, one big reference manual, and I reference some of them in my book, Engineer Your Own Success, in Chapter 2. But basically, by doing that, you're going to focus all your studying with one book. You can bring all your books to the exam, but you're going to use that one book 80% of the time, and it's going to save you a ton of time. And for any exam you take, just make sure you understand what you can bring to the exam. I've seen many engineers that have spent months and months studying and they show up with the wrong calculator for an exam. So please, don't do that to yourself. My last point on exams and credentialing is if you happen to fall off the horse, get right back on. If you don't pass one of these exams, don't wait to sign up again. I know too many engineers that say, well, I took the FE and I failed it or I, you know, I didn't pass it. I'm going to wait a couple of months, not the next one. I'll take the time after because I need to kind of um, re-energize myself. And you know what? That's just a poor excuse. And what happens most of the time is that people don't. People don't re-energize themselves. They don't take it again and they don't succeed in achieving that goal. And it will hamper them for the rest of their career.